Hello, welcome to Algebra 2. My name is Jason. I'll be your teacher in this course. I'm really excited to teach this because Algebra 2, for some crazy reason, gives a lot of students problems. But you're not going to have any problems because we're going to learn every single concept in this class by solving problems. That's the easiest way to learn anything in math. And I firmly believe that, and that's how we're going to do this class. Now, what we're going to do in this lesson, this lesson is called uh, Simplifying Expressions That Involve Sums and Differences. Basically, in the beginning of this set of lessons, we're going to do some review of the main Algebra 1 topics. Um, but what we're mainly going to do is launch directly into the Algebra uh, 2 topics pretty soon here. But I just want to get some fundamentals out of the way first to make sure we're all on the same page. The only reason any students, in my experience, uh, feel like Algebra 2 is more difficult is because their Algebra 1 skills are not really where they should be. Because if your Algebra 1 skills, if they're where they need to be, then the problems will just kind of naturally kind of move along and you'll, you'll get the hang of it. But if you don't know how to add negative numbers or do fractions or whatever, then Algebra 2 is going to seem really hard, even when it's not hard. So what we're going to do here in the beginning is we're going to do some basic order of operations and we'll review some equations and then we're going to launch right on into the Algebra 2 topics. Now I will say, the only thing that I really expect you to remember from Algebra 1, to be 100% honest, is what a graph is. We talked about graphing in Algebra 1. I also expect you to remember how to add and subtract negative positive numbers and how to multiply them, although we're going to review that here. And also how to solve basic equations, simple little equations. Everything else we're basically going to, to review and expand on and then launch into the more difficult concepts. And honestly, they're not more difficult. They just require more steps, that's all. So for the first thing we're going to do here is, again, we're going to start simplifying expressions. Um, so in order to do that, we need to all make sure we're familiar with order of operations. Order of operations has this reputation as being hard, and it's not hard. Basically, you have just a few things to remember. The most important thing that you always do first is parentheses. That's the first thing you always do. And if you have multiple parentheses, you always work on the inside first. So in, to, out. So you start in the innermost parentheses and you work your way out from there. That's the number one thing. And then beyond that, the next priority thing you have to do is exponents. So if you have any two squares or five squares or whatever, you got to do those next. Then you multiply and divide. And when you do multiplication and division, you do it left to right. If there's multiple things in one line, you just work like reading a sentence, left to right. All right, and after you've done all that stuff, if there's anything left, it's only going to be addition and subtraction. So the very dead last things you do is you add and you subtract. And again, if you have multiple additions or subtractions, you're just gonna go left to right like reading a book, left to right. All right, left to right. <clears throat> and we're going to get tons of practice with this. But just so we're all on the same page, you have, to rem you have to go parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, left and right, add, subtract, left to right. That's basically all there is to it. We're going to get a lot of practice as we go. Now, the big thing that gets a lot of people is a lot of people don't remember, a lot of students don't remember how to add and subtract. When I mean add and subtract, I mean with negative numbers, with integers, right? That's where it gets difficult. Everybody can add and subtract. With integers, it gets tough sometimes. So <clears throat> really quickly, I'm going to write down some rules for adding those, and then we're going to work a ton of problems. So for adding, we have the following kind of rules. I'm going to do it in my little shorthand way. When you add a positive number and you add it to another positive number, like 3 plus 4, you always get a positive number. Everybody knows that. So you add a positive to a positive, you always get a positive. Okay. When you add a negative, to another negative number, that means on the number line you're already negative and then you kind of add more negative to it and you end up with something that's always a negative number. So positive, positive gives you positive. When you add them, negative plus negative always gives you a negative there. Okay? But the problem comes when you try to do something like add a positive to a negative number, like 3 plus a negative 5. Or if you have a negative and you're adding a positive number to it, like negative 7 plus 4 then it's difficult sometimes to remember what the sign is going to be. The sign basically can be either one. The sign might be positive or it might be negative. So when you have mixed signs like this, all you have to do is you subtract the numbers, ignoring the signs. First you subtract the numbers, and then the sign of the answer uh, uh, is the same as larger 
absolute value. In other words, if I'm adding 3 plus a negative 7, I'm just going to subtract the 7 minus the 3, and the sign is going to go with the, be negative because 7 had a larger absolute value, basically. And no matter what you're adding to each other, if you have mixed signs, the answer could be either sign. So you just subtract the numbers, and the sign is going to be the same as whichever one is the larger absolute value. We're going to see a ton of examples of that here in just a second. So don't stress out if we're not going to get to it just yet. And then the, or here in the beginning. Now the other thing is, um, if you have something like 2 minus 3, subtraction, regular rule subtraction, it can always be written as 2 plus negative 3. In other words, if you see adding a negative, it's exactly the same thing as subtraction. You should remember that from Algebra 1. And then the last thing I want to write down in my little big time review is if you're subtracting a negative number where you have like two negative signs right next to each other, they kind of cancel out and make it a positive. So it's 2 plus 3. This is all of the big high level review I want to write down. But we're going to get lots of practice with all of this as we solve problems. So let's go over here to the board and do that right now. So let's say our first problem. And again, these are simplifying expressions with addition and subtraction. What if I have 32 minus 53? Well, remember, minus means plus a negative. So I have mixed signs of things I'm adding together. So all I do is I subtract the numbers. 53 minus 32 is 21. But the sign that the answer takes just goes which, with whichever one has the bigger absolute value, which is uh, this one. This one's the bigger absolute value, so it's negative 21. So this is the answer. When I put a little bracket around it, it just means it's the answer I, instead of circling it. That's all it basically means. All right. What if we had um, negative 23 plus 57? Again, it's mixed signs. So I don't have to do any thinking. I just subtract the numbers. 57 minus 23 is 34. And the sign of the answer goes with whichever one has the larger absolute value. In this case, 57 is larger. So the answer is positive. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to think about number lines or anything, anything like that. So when you have negative uh, mixed signs, you just subtract. And, you, and the sign of the answer takes the sign of the bigger number. What if I had negative 15 minus negative 40? What's going to be there? So now I have to do my order of operations a little bit. I have this guy, but this is basically sitting out of the parentheses. I have a double negative here, which if you remember means it's going to be negative 15 plus 40. Because the double negative gets essentially multiplied together. Negative times negative gives you positive. And, um, and so I have this guy. Now I'm adding these together. So what's going to happen here is I have mixed signs. I have mixed signs. That means I subtract. What is 40 minus 15? It's going to be 25. And the sign of the answer goes with the sign of the bigger absolute value, which is positive. That's positive 25. All right. We're just going to do tons and tons and tons of problems. I encourage you to pause and kind of work them yourself. That's fine, too. Negative 10.2 plus 17.6. I'm adding two things together with a mixed sign. All I do in that case is I subtract them. What is 17 minus 6? Minus 10.2. I'm going to get 7.4. But since it's mixed, the sign of the answer takes the sign of the bigger absolute value, which means it's positive 7.4. Moving right along, negative 9.6 minus 13.4. Again, uh, here's a little different. I have a, a negative um, minus a number, which is like a negative plus. You could write this. If you want to see it clearly, it's negative 9.6. You could write this as plus a negative 13.4 if you want to, if you need to see it that way. Negative plus negative. Remember, we said negative plus negative always gives you negative. So either you can think of it like this, or you can just say, well, I have something, and I'm subtracting something further from it that's going to go further negative. In any case, the answer is always going to be negative in that case. And I add these numbers together, which will give me 23. So again. Positive plus positive always gives me positive. Negative plus negative, when I add two negatives, I add the numbers together, and the answer is negative. So all I did was add these numbers together to get to 23. The answer is negative because it's negative times negative. Now we have quite a few more problems to, to do. Just to give you, this is more mostly a warm up, you know, because you've already done algebra one, you already should know this. If you're looking at this and you're like, I have no idea what he's talking about, I don't understand this negative stuff, I don't know why he's adding them, why is he choosing the sign like this? then it just means that your skills from Algebra 1 probably aren't where they need to be. Go back to my Algebra 1 class because I break all this stuff up into multiple lessons to give you tons of extra practice. 
This is more of a warm up to get your brain thinking and to get us all on the same page. All right, next one. <clears throat> what if I have, let me switch colors, 57 minus 13 uh, minus 46. So here's the deal where we have to do order of operations. See, here we have a bunch of addition and subtraction. Actually, it's all subtraction. We don't have any parentheses. We don't have any exponents. We don't have any multiplying or dividing, but we have adding and subtracting. So we do it left to right, just like, just like reading a book. So what we do is we say, what is 57 minus 13? Well, that's a straight subtraction. 57 minus 13 is 44. But I still have my minus 46 there. I haven't done anything with that yet. So what I'll do down here, what is 44 minus 46? So I just subtract the numbers, because you can write this as plus a negative 46 if you want to think of it that way. So you subtract the numbers, that's going to give you 2. 46 minus 44 is 2. The sign goes with the larger absolute value, so it's going to be negative 2. Just like that. All right. Next thing we're going to do, we're just going to get a little bit um, longer, essentially. They're not going to really get harder. They're just going to have more steps. So what about 68 plus a negative 42 um, plus a negative 35 um, plus 17? Again, I have a bunch of addition and subtraction, so I'm just going to work left to right. Now, you do have parentheses here. That's true. But the parentheses here, they don't really have any operation inside of them. There's nothing to do, so you're already done. If there were some addition inside the parentheses, then we would have to do it first. But since there's just a number in there, the only reason the parentheses is there is to separate this minus from this plus. So we're done with the parentheses part. Now we just go to the adding and subtracting. We work left to right. What is 68 plus a negative 42? We have mixed signs, so we subtract them. 68 minus 42 is going to be 26. And the sign takes the sign of the larger absolute value, so it's positive. But then we still have plus or minus 35 plus 17. So all we did was add these. The rest of it just comes along for the ride. Next we do these guys. We have mixed signs, so we subtract. 35 minus 26 is 9. The sign here is going to go with the larger absolute value, giving you negative 9. The plus 17 comes along for the ride. Then you're adding two things that have mixed signs. Again, you subtract them. What's 17 minus 9? You get 8. And the sign goes with the larger absolute value, which is positive, so it's positive 8. That's the final answer. So, again, left to right, I encourage you to do the first edition, carry the rest of the problem, then the next edition, carry the rest of the problem, and so on, so that you can see exactly you know, what you were doing. There's never any guessing as to what you, know, you were thinking. All right, we just have a few more. What if we have 5 minus 2 minus 9 minus 4 minus 11? So now we have to go back to order of operations. The first thing we do is parentheses. We do what's inside of that first, then the exponent, then multiplying, then adding. So inside of this parentheses, we know we have to do that first. We have some subtraction here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this is going to be 5. We can't do anything with the 5 yet. We have to work on what's inside of here. What is 2 minus 9? Same as 2 plus a negative 9. So you're going to subtract. 9 minus 2 is 7. So let's open up our parentheses and, and answer this question. 2 minus 9 is 7, but it takes the sign of the larger absolute value, so it's going to be negative 7. So we leave it inside of parentheses to deal with it later. Then we have a minus sign from here. What is 4 minus 11? Again, we just do the subtraction. 11 minus 4 is, again, uh, 7. But in this case, we take the larger absolute value. 11 is a larger absolute value than 4, so it's actually going to be negative 7 inside of there. Notice how I did that. I kept the minus signs outside. I left the parentheses in place because now in the next step, what is 5 minus a minus 7? Well, you change this into a plus, so we have plus 7 here. And then you also change this into a plus because this is a minus a minus 7, so it's plus 7. So now you just have regular old addition of positive numbers. Um, 5 plus 7 is 12. And then you still have the plus 7. And then the 12 plus 7 is going to give you 19. Very important to do every step separately, though. Inside of here, we get that answer. Inside of here, we get that answer. Then we multiply in and make it positive. Then we multiply in and make it positive. Uh, and that way, we keep everything separate. And everybody knows what, what everybody was doing. No guessing. All right, we only have two more of these guys, but we're going to introduce an absolute value of 6 minus 13 minus absolute value of 22 minus a negative 6. Now, you 
should treat absolute values kind of like parentheses, actually. So they're grouping, it's grouped together. It has a function, of course. You know what the absolute value already is, but it, it acts like a parenthesis. So we go inside of here and we say, well, we're going to do this, and then we're going to have to work on what's inside of this also. So here we have what is 6 minus 13. We subtract them as usual. 13 minus 6 is 7. Sine goes with the larger absolute value, so it's negative. Then minus, what do we have here? We have 22 minus a negative 6. So we're just going to write it as 22 plus 6 in the next step. We're not going to, the biggest mistake I see a lot of students do is they try to make it a plus and then they do the addition in one step. I don't want to see that. I want to see this change into a plus. Then you have, we'll deal with that absolute value later, negative 7. Inside of here, let's handle what's inside because remember it's like parentheses. You do what's inside of there first. 22 plus 6, 28. Then, they're like parentheses. What is the absolute value of negative 7? You just take away the sign, make it a positive 7. This minus sign is on the outside, so he doesn't do anything. Absolute value of 28 is again 28. 7 minus 28. You have subtraction, so you subtract. 28 minus 7 is 21. And the sign goes with the larger absolute value, so it's actually negative 21. So when you see parentheses, you do those first. If you see absolute values, you're going to have to do that before you know, anything else, just like it was a parentheses. Last problem, what if we have negative 4 plus 7 minus 10 minus, I'm going to introduce a bracket here, negative 6 minus negative 8. Now here we have a nested set of parentheses. So brackets, you know, sometimes it gets confusing if you have too many parentheses, so we change the outer ones into a bracket. It's the same kind of thing, you just have to work inner to outer. But since we have two sets of parentheses, it's perfectly fine to work on them in parallel which is what we're going to do. We're going to deal with this one first. What we have inside of here is addition and subtraction, so we go left and right, left to right inside the parentheses. So we keep the parentheses here. What is negative 4 plus 7? Well, it's adding mixed, so we're going to subtract. 7 minus 4 is 3. The sign goes with the larger absolute value, which makes it positive. We still have the minus 10 there. We take that for the next, the next go around for the next step. Inside of here, what can we do inside of here? It's negative 6 minus a negative 8. We have the double negatives here. That has to happen first. It would be plus 8. All right. Then we go again. We say, okay, I have parentheses here, and I can work on these in parallel. So inside of here, what is 3 minus 10? Well, it's subtraction. So I subtract. 10 minus 3 is 7. The sign goes with the larger absolute value, so it's actually negative 7. Minus. And inside of here, again, I have mixed signs I'm adding together, so I have to subtract them. 8 minus 6 is 2. The sign goes with the larger absolute value, making it positive 2. So there you go. Then I have all these brackets and parentheses, but they serve no purpose anymore because I've done everything. So it's really negative 7 minus 2. And so what I have here is a negative plus another negative, or you can, however you want to think about it in your mind, when you have a, a negative and you subtract further, it's going to give, end up giving you negative 9. But another way to think about it is negative plus negative you add the numbers and the sign is negative, so 7 plus 2 is 9, and then you add that guy giving you negative 9. That's the final answer. So this was just a quick lesson to get our brain warmed up and thinking about Algebra 2. In the beginning of these set of lessons, we're going to be reviewing a lot of material that you've already seen before. But I want to make sure that you're on the same page that I am, especially if you've never taken a class with me before to make sure that we understand each other and you know how I like to work and how I like to organize my work. You notice that I show every step here, not just for you, but that's how I do it. When I do a more complicated problem, like just for, for whatever I'm working on for my own self, I always show these steps because no matter how good you are at math, you're always going to make a mistake, always. And that's why in my notes I've got my work checked and I'm always checking against myself because I can make mistakes too. But you minimize your chance for mistakes if you show everything and I can see exactly what you were doing. So make sure you understand this. Solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get some more practice with this and then we'll continue marching through the topics in Algebra 2, teaching and learning every single concept by working problems.